الذين آمنوا وتطمئن قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا بذكر الله تطمئن القلوب السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى My brothers and sisters who has instructed us to be just Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has indeed instructed us to be just. If you are just, you will achieve contentment. You will be happy when you are a person who is unjust and you engage in injustice. You can never achieve true contentment. This is why every Friday we hear a verse. It is verse number 90 of Surah An-Nahl. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُ بِالْعَدْلِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ وَإِيتَاءِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى وَيَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ وَالْبَغِي Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Indeed, Allah instructs you to be just, to be kind, and to be good. So there is al-adl wal-ihsan. There is justice, there is kindness and goodness, and there is ita idil qurba. Allah asks you to give your relatives, to reach out to them. How can you be a wealthy person and they are struggling and they are so closely related to you? How can you be a person who has everything and your own relatives don't? Allah made them related to you to ask you about what you did towards them. These three things are repeated every Friday in almost all the masjids. So we hear it. Allah is telling you, be just. Be kind, be good, and reach out to your family members. Do you do that? Subhanallah. And then we complain, why is it that we're not content? We're not prepared to solve problems with our family members. Yet, solving problems with family members will earn us Jannatul Firdaus. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَنْهَا Allah prohibits you from the following. الفحشاء, immorality. And الفحشاء, المنكر, that which is bad and evil. And al-baghi, that which is sinful and transgression. So Allah prohibits that. Stay away from that, you achieve contentment. If you have immoral behavior, your words are immoral, you have no values when it comes to living your life, you will not be content. You've let yourself loose. No, hold high values, high morals, high standards, you will be content. Yes, it is discipline, it requires an effort, but long-term contentment and even short-term contentment. More than anything else, in the akhirah, in the hereafter, you will achieve a lot of that contentment. My brothers and sisters, then Allah says, the immorality, the evil and transgression. Remember to stay away from it. Evil, stay away from. Transgression, that which is sinful, stay away from. These three are actually interconnected and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us goodness. In verse number 97, Allah says, if you do good, if you believe and do good, we will improve the condition of your living first on earth. And thereafter, we will grant you paradise. So when you do good and you believe in Allah, remember, Allah will grant you the best of both worlds. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِّن ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ فَلَنُحْيِيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا Whosoever believes in Allah from male or female and does good deeds, Allah will grant them a, a life that is tayyibah, that is good, that is pure. Allah will grant them that contentment that they are searching for, a pure life, a happy life. Why? Because you've believed in Allah and you're doing good deeds. You must do the good deeds. And this is why the Mufassireen have always said, be conscious of your link with your maker and be conscious of the way you treat the rest of the creatures of the same maker. The common factor is he is the maker of all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to reach out to one another. Amin. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us that guarantee. Then he says to us something interesting in verse number 125 of Surah An-Nahl. When we are calling out towards his path, when we are calling people towards his path, towards goodness, be they Muslim, be they non-Muslim, be they Jewish or Christian or any other faith, we need to understand we are actually ambassadors of Allah. 
We need to behave in a way that is befitting. We need to speak in a way that we recognize the person we are speaking to is a creature of the same Allah. Allah created them as a test, not just for them, but for us as well. If you're going to speak to them disrespectfully, you've insulted Allah, no matter who they are. They are the creatures of Allah. They deserve you your respect when you are speaking to them. Remember that. So when you are calling people towards Allah, you call them with utmost respect, not just respect, but with wisdom, with tact, with the best of words, with the most beautiful of arguments. So we don't insult them. We don't curse them. We don't swear them. We don't abuse them. We don't hurt them. But rather we reach out to them with total respect in a beautiful way. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses us and he says, ادعوا إلى سبيل ربك بالحكمة والموعظة الحسنة وجادلهم بالتي هي أحسن. Allah says, call out to the path of Allah. Sorry, call to the path of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. بالحكمة with great wisdom. والموعظة الحسنة and the best way of speaking. The choose the best way of conveying the message. You will be such a content person because you'll be happy. If Allah uses you to guide one person, it's better for you than the most expensive of the camels or the conveyance on earth. Better for you than that. One narration says it's better for you than the whole world and whatever it, whatever it holds. So my brothers and sisters, if you are going to be conscious of how you're addressing the people you're trying to call towards Allah, towards their own maker, then you have been successful already just by the way you are speaking to them. Even if they didn't turn towards Allah, the fact that you did it for the sake of Allah in the way Allah taught you and you respected the creatures of Allah, He's already rewarded you. And if they were to turn, it's a bonus. At night you sleep with a smile. Today I was used by Allah to call people towards Him in such a beautiful way. I'm proud of what I've done. This pride is not the pride of haughtiness, but the pride of happiness. There is a difference between the two. One is forbidden and one is permissible. When we say in the English language, I'm proud of being a Muslim, it's not I'm haughty or arrogant of being a Muslim, but rather I'm happy to be a Muslim. So it's the pride of happiness, not the pride of haughtiness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. So my brothers and sisters, remember this. Speak to people respectfully. When you are guiding your own children, do it with respect. We want to convince them to come towards Allah. Our harshness is not going to achieve anything. This is why Allah reiterates and repeats in Surah An-Nahl that verse that I read, verse number 125, saying, call out, call in towards the path of Allah with goodness, with wisdom, with tact, with good words, with the best arguments. And remember, you are calling out to Allah. So be more careful in that regard. If we were to disrespect people, we lose happiness, we lose our sleep, we lose our contentment, we create problems, we cause division, we turn people further away from Allah, then we cannot expect contentment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we've turned people away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We move on to the next surah, which is called Surah Al-Isra. In it, Allah makes mention of the night journey that the Prophet ﷺ made from uh, uh, his house in Mecca to Baytul Maqdis and thereafter the Mi'raj that actually took him right up to the seventh heaven. My brothers and sisters, it is called Surah Al-Isra, it is also called Surah Bani Israel. In it, Allah makes mention of many facts, many points, many pieces of guidance. One of them is where Allah describes the Quran, verse number nine. Allah says, إن هذا القرآن يهدي للتي هي أقوى ويبشر المؤمنين ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أن لهم أجرا كبيرا. Allah says, indeed, this Quran guides to the best of paths, the straightest path, and it gives good news to the believers, those who are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that for them will be a great reward. So this Quran is a guide. Do you take it as a guide? If you do, good news to you. Do you give it its importance? If you do, good news to you. In the month of the Quran, 
How much of the Qur'an have you learnt? How much time do you spend with the Qur'an on a daily basis? It is the manual that Allah sent you and I, the manuscript through which you will achieve the success of this world and the next. It will lead you to the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You will follow the hadith, the blessed path of the Prophet peace be upon him and you will be able to walk through a path that will lead straight to Jannatul Firdaus. May Allah grant us contentment in this world and may Allah grant us paradise in the hereafter. Ameen. Thereafter, verse number 18, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about those who want only this world and they have forgotten about the hereafter. If you'd like contentment, don't concentrate all your efforts on this world alone. My salary, my job, my money, my house, my car, my clothes, my perfumes, etc, etc. What about my akhirah? What about my hereafter? What about my paradise? My prayer, my consciousness of Allah, reaching out to others, earning the jannah, etc, etc. What about all of that? So Allah says, Whosoever wants only that which is immediate, which means this worldly life, Man kana yuridul ajila, whoever only wants this worldly life that is right now, Allah says, Ajalna lahu fiha manasha. We will grant them from it to whomsoever we wish and to whatever level we wish. And in the hereafter, they have Jahannam. They have a torment waiting for them. Why should that be the case? Allah says, وَمَنْ أَرَادَ الْآخِرَةَ وَسَعَى لَهَا سَعْيَهَا وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنْ فَأُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ سَعْيُهُمْ مَشْكُورًا Whosoever is focused on the hereafter, they want the hereafter and they're working towards the, the success of the hereafter, then those people, they will definitely have their sacrifices rewarded in a very, very great way. My brothers and sisters, Allah has promised us that if we focus on the hereafter, we will automatically achieve this world firstly, and then the hereafter. Remember, when Allah's given you, it's not a sign that He's happy with you. When Allah's taken away from you, it's not a sign that He's upset with you. It, it is all to do with the heart, your connection with Allah and your contentment either way. May Allah grant us that contentment. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabiyina Muhammad. Al-lazheena amanu wa tatma'innu qulubuhum bi dhikri Allahi ala bi dhikri Allahi tatma'innu al-qulub.